This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be learning about classes in Python, what they are and how we can use them. But before we do anything, I'm just going to explain a bit of the theory. And to keep it simple, a class is just a blueprint for what an object should look like and how it should function. For example, before you build a house, usually you would create a blueprint containing all the relevant information and functionality regarding how that house should look and how it should function before you start building it. And classes are no different. They contain all the relevant information for what an object should do. So for this lesson, we're going to pretend that we are a microwave manufacturer which means first we're going to design the blueprint and then we're actually going to create the microwaves using that blueprint. Now in Python, if you want to create a class, you use the class keyword followed by the class name. And the class name conventionally should follow camel case, which means it will start with uppercase and every additional word will also start with uppercase. So if you had a class called blue car, you'll see that each time you have a new word, it starts with an uppercase character. But in this example, we're going to call it microwave. And for now, it's going to be empty. But already with this code, we can start creating objects from this class because now we have the blueprint, which means that we can actually get started with creating some microwaves. So here, what we're going to do is instantiate a microwave. And to do that, we're going to create a variable called smeg, which is a brand or a type of microwave. You can search it on Google. It's a very nice brand. And that's going to be of type microwave, which will equal the microwave with the constructor, which are these parentheses. Once you use the parentheses on a class, this creates an instance of that class, which means we're creating a unique microwave from this blueprint. Also, it's worth mentioning, you did not have to include this bit here. This is what they refer to as a type annotation or a type hint. It's only used for code editors. So if you don't like type annotations, you can safely ignore that. In all my videos, I use type annotations because I find them very useful and I will use them throughout this lesson as well. But it's up to you whether you want to include type annotations or not in your code. Anyway, now we have an instance of a microwave which is called smeg, which means if we were to print this, what we're going to get back is a unique ID pointing to the unique instance of this microwave. But as it stands, this class is kind of useless. It doesn't contain any useful information nor functionality. So next we're going to modify it because we want our microwaves to be a bit more customizable. So next we're going to be learning about initializers, how to create instance with specific information which actually kind of customizes each one of the microwaves that we create. So here we're going to be using a Dunder method called init. And by default, init returns none. You're not required to provide this. I just like to do it with all my code because it makes it extra explicit. The initializer takes care of initializing the class, which means if you have any extra information you want to give the class when you are creating an instance, that code is going to be run here as soon as you instantiate it. So right after self, we're going to type in brand of type string and power rating of type string. And inside here, we need to type in self.brand equals brand and self.power rating equals power rating. And immediately we're going to get some syntax highlighting because we need to now provide this information to the constructor. So here we're going to give it the brand of smeg and we're going to give it a power rating of B. And thanks to this information, we now have a microwave that actually contains some data. So if we were to print smeg.brand and smeg.power rating, you'll see that this class will contain that information. It's going to return to us the information that we inserted. And we can even create another microwave, which we're going to call Bosch or Bosch. And that's going to equal this microwave with the brand set to Bosch. Do let me know in the comment section down below how much I'm messing that up. And the power rating will be set to C. Then we can print Bosch dot brand and the power rating. And what we should get is the information from Bosch now. But right now you're probably asking, 
okay, that makes sense, but what is self? You completely skipped self. Well, self is the actual instance of the class. And that just makes sure that all this data sticks to the correct instance or to the correct object. In the case of Smeg, as soon as we insert this information, self turns into Smeg. So all of these become Smeg, but that's only when we're referring to Smeg. Otherwise, if we're referring to Bosch, this becomes Bosch, which means when we call Bosch.brand, it gives us the correct data back. So again, self just refers to whichever instance we're currently using. And one thing that's quite cool that a lot of beginners don't know about is that you can actually change this name to whatever you want. You can even change it to this, which is something popular in Java, or you can change it to something called instance. If that's what you want, you can do it. I do not recommend you do that because conventionally, we will always have this as self. If you look at other tutorials or you look at documentation online, this will always be referred to as self, but it's just a convention. So if you really want to change this to something else, you can do that and the code will function the same. I mean, you can even change this to S and if we run the code, it's going to work exactly the same way. Next, let's move on to the topic of methods because right now we have a microwave that contains data, but it doesn't do anything, it doesn't function. So what I'm going to do is remove all of this. We're still going to keep Smeg because I want to use it later, but the rest we're going to delete. And inside here, we're going to create our very first method, which is going to be called turn on because we want to be able to turn on the microwave. And that's going to return none because this will only execute code. And I also forgot, but inside the initializer, we want to add another attribute. And this one's going to be called turned on. So we can follow or track the state of the microwave, whether it's turned on or off. And this will be of type Boolean, and it's going to be set to false initially. So as soon as we create a microwave, we're going to make sure it's turned off as soon as we use it. I mean, imagine you open a box with a microwave and it's already turned on. That would be kind of weird. Anyway, now that we have that attribute, we can refer to it by typing in if self dot turned on. So if it is turned on, we're going to print the following statement, microwave, and inside here I want to add the brand, self dot brand is already turned on. So we don't turn on that microwave twice. Else we're going to set self dot turned on to true. And we're going to inform the user that we successfully turned it on. So we'll copy this, paste it down here and say that the microwave with the self dot brand is now turned on. And that will be our very first method. But next I want to copy this and paste it directly under because we're going to create a function that turns off the microwave. So we're going to rename that to turn off. And this time, if the microwave is turned on, we're going to do the exact opposite. We're going to set self dot turned on to false. And we're going to kind of flip these. So I'm going to, or actually to make this much easier, I'm going to remove everything so we don't mix it up and just copy the statements from above. So now we can type in that this is now turned off. Else, if we try to turn off a microwave that's already turned off, we're going to give them a statement that says the microwave is already turned off. And finally, I'm going to provide one more method for this class. And this is going to be the run method. So we can actually put food inside and give it a timer and cook that food. So here we'll say run for this amount of seconds, which will be of type integer. And once again, that will return none. And obviously we first need to check if self.turnedon is set to true. Otherwise we can't run the microwave. But if it is, we can print that we are running self.brand for seconds, seconds. Else we're going to print that a mystical force whispers turn on your microwave first. And those will be the methods that we will use for this class. Now we can actually turn on the microwave, we can turn off that microwave, and we can run the microwave. As you can see, we have a full blueprint of what the class should look like and how it should function. So next, let's try to use this functionality. So right below our instance of Smeg, we're going to refer to it and use dot notation to actually use these methods. So right now we're going to turn on the microwave twice. And what you're going to notice in the console is that the first time 
it's actually going to turn it on. But the second time, it's going to tell us that it's already turned on. So we have that safety mechanism in place. But once it's turned on, we can refer to SMEG and run this microwave for, let's say, 30 seconds. Or, yeah, 30 seconds. And then we will turn off the microwave. And now if we run it, you'll see that the microwave will turn on. It's going to run for 30 seconds and then it's going to turn off because that's exactly what we told it to do. If we try to run our microwave after we've turned it off for 10 seconds, we're going to get that mystical force that whispers to us that we should turn on our microwave first. So as you could see, it was that easy to give our class functionality and data that we could later use to execute certain functionality. And what's really cool about this is that no matter what microwave we create, we can use all of that information the same way, which means here we're going to change it back to Bosch, give it a power rating of C. And now with Bosch, we can perform the same actions. We can turn it on, we can turn it off, and we can try to run it for let's say two seconds. And it's going to work exactly the same way. Microwave Bosch is now turned on, and then it turns off, and then the mystical force whispers to us that we can't run it without turning it on first. So with that minimal setup, we could use all the functionality once again. But there's still one last thing I want to show you before we conclude this video, and this is the concept of Dunder methods. So for the next example, I'm going to remove all of this and keep both of these microwaves so that we can use them later. Also in PyCharm, I'm going to collapse these methods because you already know what they contain so that we have some more space on our screen. But now that we have all of this space on our screen, I can finally get started with explaining how Dunder methods work in Python. And to explain it, I'm going to attempt to perform this operation, which is smeg plus bosch. If you try to run this, you'll immediately notice that we will get back a type error, that we tried to use this operand with these objects, and that was not supported because we did not define this operation anywhere in our class. But to define it, what we need to do is go inside our class and define a Dunder method. So here we're going to use the Dunder method called add, which will take self, which is the current instance, and other, which is the other instance. And the reason they call this Dunder method is because they have double underscores. So it's actually a double underscore method. And you might also hear these being referred to as magic methods. Anyway, as soon as you supply this Dunder method, the syntax highlighting will go away and the warning will go away as well. Right now, if I don't add anything here, the script will run, but it's not going to return anything. So adding these together will do nothing. But inside here, you can actually do whatever you want. You can make it return whatever you want. If you add one microwave to another, you might expect to get a fusion back. And in this example, we can return a string with self.brand plus other.brand. So that when we actually try to add these together, what we will get back is this fusion. And the same thing applies for the other operators, whether it's an asterisk or a pipeline or whatever. All of these can be defined in our class. So if we want to define, for example, the multiplication operator, we can do that using the dunder mole method. And here we can return exactly the same thing from earlier, except with an asterisk. As you can see now, the next time we actually call this, it's going to give us back the string that we specified. And you don't have to return a string here. You can actually return whatever you want. It can even be another instance of the class. But one that's actually very useful is the string dunder method. And this is going to return to us a string. And what we will return is the f string of self.brand parentheses with the rating set to self.power rating. And what this does is give us a legible string representation of our class so that the next time we actually print any one of our classes, we will get back something that we can actually read. And if we do this with Bosch, we will also get something legible for Bosch. Otherwise, without this Thunder method, we're going to get the memory address of the class or the representation of the class. And that's also something that you can override. For example, if we go here and we define the representation, this will return to us a string. 
So here, instead of returning that memory address, you can return whatever you want. This will be used when you use the representation of the class. So if you use wrapper on smeg or wrapper on bosch, it's going to use this thunder method. But you might be asking, if we had none of these defined, why do we get this back for the representation? Well, that's because that's the default representation for a class. When you print an object, if it can't find the string thunder method, it's going to use the representation. That's why when we use the string representation, it's going to default to using the string representation. And one thing I want to mention very fast, because I know this will confuse a lot of people when they are learning Python, but the difference between the string dunder method and the wrapper dunder method is that the string dunder method should return something that is user friendly, something that your grandmother could read, while the representation dunder method should return something that's useful for the developer. For example, here we have a microwave class, so something you could return is the microwave with the following arguments, which we have brand and power rating. So brand can equal self.brand and power rating will equal the self.power rating. And both of those are strings, so I will surround those in quotation marks. This is a good example of something you can return in the wrapper under method. Because right now, when we run this, we're going to get the user-friendly message, but as soon as the developer asks for something more specific, such as what this object actually is, what they will get back is this representation of the object. And I absolutely messed that up because the quotation mark should be inside the parentheses. This actually gives information that's useful for a developer because now they know that you have a microwave object with a brand set to this string and a power rating set to this string. While the string representation only gives us something legible. But if we change that to repr as well, we'll get the same thing back. Anyway, it's time to conclude this video with answering the question, why all this hard work? Well, in certain situations, classes can be seen as the best way to organize your code in the sense that all the functionality is coupled with the class. So you will have everything you need in one place. And that just makes it easy to create functionality that actually works with minimal effort, just like I demonstrated with these two microwaves. We can even add a third one called Samsung, which will be of type microwave. That's going to equal a microwave with the brand set to Samsung and the power rating set to A. And just like that, we can use all of that functionality with Samsung. We can turn it on, we can run the microwave for one second, and then we can turn it off. And that will run straight out of the box. It was that simple to set up a microwave and then use it with no further issue, which is just very convenient. Because if we did not use a class for these microwaves, we would have to go through a lot of effort to create separate microwaves. So yeah, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below what you think about classes, whether you're confused about something or whether there's something I should have covered in more detail. Please let me know in the comment section down below and I'll try to make a follow-up video or I will learn from my future lessons. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.